All right, let's bring Fari in live, and we'll give us a quick second to cover a stock that he doesn't like. Fari doesn't really care for these little ones, but Plug Power, P-L-U-G, had a nice 10% pop there yesterday afternoon. was just hanging out around $4, nothing going on, and then, boom, the stock takes off and blasts off. Go ahead, make my day. Oh, we're too, you're too fast now, Fari. We're talking about one of your favorite stocks, Plug Power, which is, I know, not one which of your one? favorite stocks. P-L-U-G we're talking about. I know you don't love these little I've stocks. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. it's not a Bawa stock again. Jeez. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to Plug Power. Let me, let me tell you what the key stock is today. Okay, tell me. Northrop. Did you see my babies take off of uh, George, w., George Herbert Walker Bush? And they don't miss. Those are our F-18 ENFs. So that's a good point. In the middle of the night. They, did, they went and did their job and came back gloriously. NOC came back? No, he's talking, what, about, he's talking about the planes. Oh, the planes. F-18 ENFs. Super Hornets, my friend. Super Hornets. Sailor, you got to get with the program here. What happened with that Northrop Grumman yesterday, though? Fari, look at the stock price on that thing. Took quite the haircut. Was there news out on that thing? I have no clue. Okay. I'm talking about the real stock, the stock, the titanium, the the engine, the the, the fuel. That's what I did. I hit it. I came back. You're talking about paper stock. Come on, get with the program, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fire. I gotta bring the I gotta bring a chart up. I will. Give me a sec. Okay. What's going on, guys? Not too much, not too much here. We're just watching uh, Apple get uh, lit up here in the pre-market. Uh, bendable iPhone uh-huh. uh, seems to be the problem on that. Thought we had a breakout yesterday above the 102.35 level. Now pulling back. Uh, you got anything in your war chest uh, for Apple? Uh, well, my OTF is stuck. In, my OTF charts are not coming up yet. That's a little bit. Uh, okay. It's just kicking in. OTF is the, what's called other time, time frame. frame. We're trying to catch the footprint of the one percent, or their or their brokers. You know what I'm saying? We're not looking at mom and pops. We're not looking at what Fari or Joel or Dennis are doing because we can't move the market. We're looking at an environment where the the one percent of the brokers are doing something. And if you can't catch that right, you're gonna go somewhere. So that's that's loading. But let me go to my regular charts. That's a new technology we've come up with. We're working on it for about 90 days, and you're just beginning to uh, uh, get some form. So, um, and let's not dwell on it yet because it's still, I think, I like, call experimental. Uh, on the regular charts, uh, all-time high there. We had a good day yesterday on Apple. Today it's down 76. But you also notice, day before we were also down, right? Was it then yesterday? Yesterday was a good day. We were up. Day before yes, was a back. tough day, and we were down. Yeah, uh, I think it. I think it was. I think first of all, the numbers were uh, uh, the ten million is outstanding, no question. Until you look at it at the rate the uh, smartphones are growing, so they're just there. That's it. They only grew eleven percent over the year uh, over the last uh, 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 introduction they had. Right, the last introduction had nine million. Here they had 10, uh, but we're growing at about 25%. So they're missing the pack a little bit there. But, you know, um, the market share already belongs to Android. Uh, and so Apple is just there. I mean, uh, if you let the hype down and you, you let the, the, you know, the, 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 the TV stuff and the, what we call Comedy Central and that crap goes why, and things settle down and take a look at it and you say, you know what? It's a good stock. It's huge. A lot of them are in it, but it's not performing outstandingly. And if you if you look at the vols, the vols tell you the same thing. Apple vols are not very high. No, they're not. They're not. It's not Tesla. It's not uh, uh, Netflix. It just you know, it's not there. It's actually a pre. It's like investment grade stock. That's it. So, what are your thoughts here, Frank? So, How are you playing this? Uh, I haven't touched Apple yet. Uh, we're flat on Apple. Actually, we don't have a lot of pollution on options yet. We kind of start taking things down uh, coming into uh, September because our walls on VIX put the, the, the stuff I po- post at the end of the day. Throughout the day, we watched that. The walls were heightened earlier on, on, the, on the September expiry and November um, and October expiry. So as a design... We traveled back a little bit. I told that also to our other moderators, to Ethan and others. I said, listen, 
guys, guys, pull back a little bit on our open positions a little bit. You know, work what you got. Uh, take profit when you can. If you want to put a trade on, you better have a good logic. Don't, don't, don't load up yet. Now, also market is doing this. We're waiting for uh, our uh, uh, launch pad mode to come up, which is the way we read the uh, Michael oscillator. Okay. We're getting close. Once we get to our launch pad mode, okay, then we'll travel up again. So right now we're very cautious. If we're gonna get into something like this week and next week, better be compelling. You you better talk to me, you know, as, as a strategist. Tell me why. If it looks good, okay, maybe we'll put a, a few contracts up until we get to launch pad mode. Because launch pad mode gives us a couple of months of run up, pretty good. And we're getting set up for that. We have a good flush. Remember, we had a flush in early August, okay? And this is a little bit too close to have another one. So this one should be good. You know, there's a time and place for everything. Sometimes you have to throw it back. Now, in advisory service, that's an advice itself. You know, I often get comments back saying, hey, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for not going crazy here and saying, uh, you know what, go on and have more tea. You know, relax a little bit. We're going we're gonna to redo this thing next week. Right now, we're just going to watch what we got. Maybe we nibble, but uh, the time and place is not there. Why? Because the macro picture says so, you know. So you're not putting a lot oh, of... You know, we, we, it's, it's like future trading. We don't trade all the time all the future. We trade first hours and last hour. Go ahead, sir. You were saying? You're making a great point here. Sometimes, you know, the, the best trade is no trade. And if, you know, if your indicators aren't lining up or the volatility is not where you want it, then sometimes sitting on the sidelines and waiting for your entry points, you know, just showing discipline. Uh, let's just go to the overall market here, Fari. We have have come yes, off all-time highs, a really... Jacked everything up last Friday on the quad witch expiration. We've had to saw off here. Spoo's uh, trying. It to... was Baba time. Baba, not Booba, but Baba time. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, Ali yeah, Tapa. Yeah, if you pay too much, you bought too much at the top. Now you're dealing with Baba. Yeah, that's a B U B B A. <laughs> that's a different Baba. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, did you been active? Did you, did you catch that? I got. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. Well, yeah, first, yeah, before yeah, yeah. we be careful. The, I think that whole jack up there last week. You could see that. Highly orchestrated of how we ran up into that. Of course, I, I don't think uh, Jack Ma and company were any dummies. Well, read Goldman Sachs and Morgan that to pick it after uh, Scottish votes and the Fed. Those two already create buoyancy and then put it on expiration. Masterfully done. Central casting couldn't put it together that well. What, with the pop and, and off the open and they bipped all those buy orders and then uh, they took the market down? Is that what you're referring to? Well, yeah, well, the problem is that well, usually when you have a, such a huge, remember, there's one thing I learned my grandma, money doesn't grow on trees, and that's still true. Somebody's got to pay for that $25 billion, $21 billion, $25, whatever, $21 billion, I guess, IPO. That's a huge IPO. As you notice, if you look, all you have to do is look at Early in the week last week and see what being sold. A lot of our social networks, some of our internet. You know, people were getting out of it other days. I'm talking about big boys, not mom and pops. I'm talking about serious guys who have to come in and write up and write a check for twenty one billion or whatever totally in aggregate. So you would see start that, that pressure there. And then you had then then came uh, Auntie Janet. Boom, we're up. You know, a little while tell you, but we're up. And then you, you had a Scottish vote that went to no, and then you had expiration. So as I said, central casting in Hollywood couldn't write a script right on this. This was boom, boom, boom. And so when you get fl fluffy all the way up there, then you hit, make a new high into a day. And I said on Thursday, right after I, I think I had an interview with you, but I think, uh, maybe, on, yeah, I don't think that day, that day I had an interview with you on Wednesday. But on Thursday, in the chat, so I said, guys, don't be surprised that because of the IPO, because of Bob IPO, uh, we could be selling into the close on Friday. That's exactly what happened. We came back out. Not a big drop, not a big drop, but it was a minor. Now, coming to your point, Joel, here, about where we are market-wise, that's day one, slight negative, okay? Day two, which was uh, Monday, big down, boom. Yesterday, pushed down to almost negative three sigma. Yeah. Again, go back to your sigma levels. Okay? And today's day three. 
We're up what now on overnight? Uh, we're trading up four, mm -hmm. so almost five points here. But, about uh, two only. Yeah, fair value. Two only according to fair value. They hit the spoos uh, just between that four and 415 hours. So we're going okay. a little bit below fair value. Well, we're okay. okay. We're up. So we we're beginning to uh, uh, see a possible change. Today's key. I had talked about uh, yesterday, either it's going to be last hour to buy yesterday or first hour to buy to now. Why? My class uh, is negative 222. See, the charts give you a signal. And that's how the big boys move. And that's what, and there's no emails. You see, the corporate is the charts. It's the hidden message of the charts. They don't send you send an email. You know, George, so and so, the writers note to uh, Julian Robertson and say, hey, buddy, let's go in. Because I'm going in. No, they know what to look for in the chart. The setup is negative 222. We're getting close to a launch pad. We get to 350, they all tell him crazy, negative two. It's a three day rule, one, two, three. Third one, you're going to turn. So you think you that's today? You and if you can't blame anybody, they, there's no emails, there's no smoking gun. Nobody collaborated together, except they all saw the same thing and they know the hidden code. You know, and they all have their CMTs and all their technicians, and all they all, they all, have, they, they, they all subscribe to the same school of thought. That's all. So do you think that's today? Is this going to be the turn today then, Fari? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Today is the day. Yeah. If it's not, I'd be very surprised. See, always when you look at, well, it's, it's like news, right? You look, you have expectation, and the news comes. News doesn't match, then you're going to see the reaction. Then you're going to say, okay, ha, this is what's going to happen. So I, my expectation is, yeah, this is a bounce today. Okay, so you're looking. Like, I wish actually be a, another push down a little bit. Okay, because I want to get to that 350. Negative. And then uh, we are run up. Now, let me give you another hint. Did you look at, look, look, look at the notes yesterday that uh, uh, John Nigerian, our teeth of mine, he talked about the VIX uh, reports out of the floor, which they always do. I attached to that the put call on the VIX intraday live on October and uh, November and December. October is neutral, November and December are b bullish for stocks. And he RT'd that. Because he, you know, he, you know, he worked with me quite a bit. He, he knows what I've done, what, what's how crucial the VIX put call is. The dollar rated. The data is showing also the large boys, they're putting their vault bets on uh, November and December. That means what? We've got a little bit more work to do here in, in October. Okay, we're not really October, think about it. But I guess I'm talking about I, I think expiration cycle, that's my month. Yeah. You get some people go by lunar moon, some people go by solar, solar moon, <laughs> and solar. I go by expiration cycle. That's my mentally I've been programmed from my early age, I guess. But here, when you look at it, is this, so we're in October, really. So October is going to be a little bit shaky here, ball wise. But November and December are bright. So if we do create a launch pad here, boom, you're going to see our. Uh, uh, Christmas rally for being up shortly. Okay, Rob Hood's really want you to go into your crystal ball here, and he wants to know if you have an opinion on what the relationship with the market and the 2016 presidential election with, will be. Is that going too far uh, off for this you? This is a midterm year. It's yes. way too early. I mean, midterms are not as good as in presidential cycles. Uh, I think... We will probably have to get into some uh, analog year, uh, next year this time to start looking. You see my point? To try to start tracking. So what you do, you start looking for your analog before the year starts. You pin them down and you go. And you put the zeros in. You put January 1st the same. So let's say I find a, 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 a cycle that makes sense for that. Uh, because not all presidents shot cycle sign up. Can I match, okay? Uh, and I'm not an expert on that. I'll tell you who he is. Uh, Ethan. No, McClellan. McClellan. Uh, McClellan. Tom. Tom McClellan does a lot of that. Sh uh, Sherman's son. Sherman, Sherman Miriam McClellan created McClellan Oscillator. Their son, out of Seattle, he does a lot of those cycles. He's good at that. Okay? But remember, that only comes every four years. And it's a little bit too early right now because we're in a... Don't, yeah, don't use midterm election cycle for that. Because this is, a, you know, this is a congressional. This is not uh, presidential. It's a little bit early. Plus, 
Now, this is, I give you another thing. He, he talked about crystal ball. Make sure you get a good one. Mine is from eBay. <laughs> right now, it's a little bit cloudy. Could be because I got it on eBay. Buy a new one. Just kidding. Oh. Adding a little bit of humor to you guys, too. You heard, guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, Fari. Just uh, any final thoughts? You are looking for a bounce in the market today. You would like another push yeah. lower. You said to negative three. Is it was that negative three fifty or negative three sigma? No, negative three fifty on the cutoff letter. Okay. We're at negative two two two. It's not going to take much to get there, but we need a good flush. It's what Jerry Seinfeld called a courtesy flush. A courtesy flush. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. 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 It's a, all right, well, we'll be keeping an eye on that uh, that pre-market low at 69.50 that uh, coincides with the low from yesterday and also a low back from September 15th. So that'll be a key level to hold on the upside. All right, Fari, well, thanks for joining us on uh, Benzinga's pre-market prep uh, brought to you by Charles Schwab. We appreciate your input. Uh, have a good holiday, good weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Oh, so this is by Charlie. What happened to Option House? Uh, we got a new sponsor. We're now sponsored by Charles Schwab. Well, uh, Fredrickson over there is a good buddy of mine, head of options. Uh, Charlie. Okay. All right. So yeah, uh, I put his first name, but yeah, he, he he's, he's, he's been big, big in options, and uh, we go back years. He's a very smart cookie. He runs their options se- section. Okay. Well, uh, good. That's a great sponsor. Congratulations, guys. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you next week. We'll see you guys next week. Be well.